Hey people, it's me again. So anyways, one of the things that I want to talk about here is the whole thing with Carlos Maza in recent days as far as with the, the latest controversy about him. So anyways, it turns out that he's not as downtroddled as he makes himself appear to be, you know. But it, it goes into, like, what I had talked about a, a couple months earlier about the champagne socialist of that sort. And so, Carlos Maza is basically a perfect example of a champagne socialist. You know, that they, they're rich or come from a rich background, but then pretend to be um, poor... Or of that sort. But I, I, I keep forgetting this uh, one movie. I think it was. I think it was, might have been The Big Lebowski. Because then one of the characters was supposed to be like that. That he comes from a rich family and pretending to be um, downtrodden or whatever it is that, you know, I'm. I don't know what the the whole phrase is, you know, on the tip of it's on the tip of my tongue there, and there was supposed to be like another character in the movie who uh, is poor and trying to pretend to be rich. Yeah, you know? so it's kind of really strange how certain people are of that sort. You know what I mean? But. In some ways, you know, the the champagne socialist types like Carlos Maza are the biggest hypocrites of that sort. Because they claim to represent the working class when they really don't. And they don't really represent, like, any of their interests of that sort. You know, when they say all these old um, diatribes from... Uh, uh, Karl Marx or 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 Vladimir Lenin and all that sort of stuff, but it reminds me of of that one episode of South Park. It was like the season finale there, and when they were making fun of Jeff Bezos and how there was this one person who was who was uh, say, uh, quoting. Word for word on the English translation of the manifest, the Communist Manifesto of that sort, and simply because of the fact that he has been been uh, uh, chipped by the by the by the market of that sort, you know. But it's like one of those little things that I said before, you know, that if. If some of those people who were the more downtrodden were more treated uh, more treated fairly of that sort, then they wouldn't have that Marxist Leninist uh, ideology that they uh, espouse of that sort. You know, it's like the whole thing with like the student debt. There, if the student debt never occurred and it was just simple to just do all of that sort of stuff, then then a lot of the millennials there wouldn't be uh, self-described socialists of that sort. But, although I could be wrong about sort of thing there, because um, as, as far as that goes, I, I knew a guy back about like at least about 15 years ago, and he was like a self-described socialist of that sort, but he was like a young black socialist there, but I don't know what has happened with him at this point, whether if he had abandoned socialism as a whole, you know, because oh, maybe he was just doing that because it was just a way to make a mark on society or some sort like that, you know, but that's just something I should have mentioned here. 
But at that time, I was, I was like a self-described uh, libertarian of that sort. You know, so I was kind of like on the other end of that spectrum of that sort. But, but I think it was more like libertarian leftist, not, not a uh, libertarian rightist of that sort. You know, but I mean, I'm still kind of like leftist, but I think I'm became a little bit more, more libertarian as I gone though. But, but the current party as it stands now are just a bunch of people who are really Republican light of that sort. You know, they just really want no government regulation of, on business whatsoever. You know, sometimes government regulation is necessary. You know, and it's like without government regulation, everything in this room could fall apart and I could get hurt or get killed you know due to faulty things and you know that is just the bigger problem of that but at the same time you know when government does bad then then of that sort of stuff there is on where do you turn to if it's if it's government has complete control of of uh, production and all that. So that's like another thing there. But as far as that goes, the main reasoning of why some of the rich people like that would be socialists there is simply to advocate for government's mean of control of of the economic sector, as far as that goes, but thereby locking people in, as far as that goes. But it's like the same thing when it comes to people on the right that are just as wealthy there. It's really more or less they want to keep uh, the middle class, the working class, and and the less unfortunate down as far as that goes but considering all that there there are people on the right that do fight for the middle class do fight for the working class they just have a different approach to it than people on the left who fight for the middle class the working class and all of that you know and it's kind of like you take your pick as far as which way is better as far as to help the working class or help the middle class of that sort. Because in, in, in some ways, it's kind of like if, if the middle class or the working class collapse, then the rich would also collapse as a result, you know. So, would we really want that to happen? So, anyways, I guess that's uh, probably it until next time. So, talk to you guys later.